power loose in the earth. It is ancient and forever new. No one may resist it. It is the very ray which gives discovery. No one will stop or manipulate it. The ray of discovery will change this world. Hello again, and thank you for tuning in. In our series of telecasts, we will chronicle some of the most astounding discoveries made in our time. You and I together will rediscover technology which has been kept hidden by seditious privateers who in their greed and malice have vainly attempted to manipulate and alter the natural movement of discovery. In our series, you will be shown astounding discoveries which have been suppressed for some 50 years. Look to your viewing screens now as we unfold this drama together. It is the deep eyes which seem to capture anyone who looks at this portrait of Nikola Tesla, taken before his passing in 1943. Born in what is now Yugoslavia, into an Orthodox priest's household, Tesla grew amid the extreme mysteries of faith, death, life. The Balkan foothills, crossroad of east and west for countless centuries, had left their indelible mark in Tesla's poetic soul early age, Tesla began to receive strange and powerful visionary experiences. These increased in their frequency and intensity, and never failed their grateful recipient. For it was directly through these that Nikola Tesla designed and constructed new devices, such as this world has not seen. Indeed, it may be said that Nikola Tesla was the most dramatically outspoken discoverer of his day. His inventions paved the route of our 20th century technology. Deeply secured in Tesla's mind were the teachings of a blend of mysticism which taught that matter, energy, and thought were all merged as a oneness in certain foundational levels of experience. In this doctrine and view of existence, it was normal to accept that nature was a plenum, a fullness from whose depths spontaneously would emerge new wonders as out of nothingness. For Nikola Tesla, nature was not inert and vacuous. Nikola saw idea and thought emerging out of the unknown deeps of nature and himself as fortunate participant in the drama. All persons, he believed, were participants, but certain ones were more sensitive. He was sensitive to every undulation of nature's moods, rhythms, and mutations. Human beings were thus living receivers within a gallery of externally derived wonders whose source was eternal and loving. This was a world wherein all persons were interconnected. No single being lived or could live whose actions did not affect the whole world and worlds to come. leaving his home and studying in Graz, Austria, and Prague, Czechoslovakia, Tesla first encountered resistance to his free and fluid beliefs. Finding his greatest relief in voluminous readings of the German writer Goethe, Tesla began to again grow strong in his view of nature. In a previous time, it was Goethe as well 
who prompted by an angry refusal to view experience as inert, began researches in all the major fields of natural science. His numerous texts in color phenomena, plant metamorphosis, subjective cognition, and participatory science are relatively unknown to the modern scientist. These researches were Goethe's own impassioned attempt to prove invalid the now growing materialistic view of nature. It was in the writings of Goethe that Tesla found new strength and modern validity in the mysticism which his father and mother had raised him. Tesla's lifelong quest was thereafter to prove, by physical means, the truth of his inner faith. That matter, energy, and experience itself are in actuality various manifestations of a singular reality. This reality was named by ancient philosophers. And this view of experience has encountered several periods of revival and scorn throughout Western history. His professors called it the luminiferous ether. To secure interactions with this mysterious substance was to receive enablement to enhance life for all humanity. Tesla knew that ultimately different kinds of machines would be required for etheric interactions. He sought these means out while emigrating to America. Having come from European technology, fully versed in all kinds of electrical machines, Tesla came highly recommended to Thomas Edison. The rough-cut American inventor was much admired by young Tesla. The very day they met, Edison placed him on his staff. Apparently, at this time, Edison did not have the skills required to repair his own failing electrical systems. Tesla was placed in this capacity. After this somewhat abrupt test, repairs were effected after a 32-hour work period with no interruptions. Edison was much impressed. Too much impressed. Tesla was forever after viewed with a watchful eye by the now megalomaniacal Edison. After this time, Tesla was promised a sum of money in exchange for a series of designs which he completed and built for Edison. The money never left the old man's pocket. But Tesla left the old man. Thus, war was declared thereafter between the two inventors. With Edison's growing ambitions and lessening abilities, more and more of his personality was being bought out by Morgan, who also managed to buy up Edison's own holdings and factories. Tesla was on the street, living the life of abject poverty, digging ditches. Let it now be noted, Creative souls are rarely competitive. Competitive souls are rarely creative. Tesla spent several months in sheer misery. Hungry, ill-clothed, much abused. Nevertheless, Tesla's brilliant design for his electrical system based upon visions he received during his student years were soon to find fresh life in the material world above the ditch. Through a series of rare and extraordinary meetings with certain financiers, 
Tesla built his own research laboratories and entry again into the world of the demure and the debonair whose company he enjoyed in Europe was secured. Tesla held patents on every machine and machinery dealing with alternating current. George Westinghouse, aficionado of Tesla's, bought the rights to manufacture and proliferate this system for Tesla. The price? One dollar per horsepower unit. Alternating current was a magical means of using etheric surges to create very brilliant effects through wires at great distances and with very little loss. The lamps in Edison's system, however, dimmed with greater distance from his now ever-present smoky plants. In Tesla's system, energy could be directly transformed into other levels and modes of power. Greater efficiency was Tesla's trademark. Through him and those who aided him, humanity, all of humanity, was given a great benefit. Morgan loved the idea of building numerous plants and electrifying all of America with the Edison method. He made sure that Edison went down in the texts for all time as America's greatest inventor. Morgan backed Edison for good financial reasons. This Commodore, as he insisted upon being called, was a man much feared and revered. Creating monopolies in every utility needed by the American public was Morgan's forte. General Electric was now to become his latest capstone on the pyramid to join his General Mills, General Motors, and General Steel. Morgan had Edison and all of his holdings. Morgan watched Tesla from the distance. By now, Tesla was a millionaire at 32. His researches began to assume a very strange nature. His New York laboratory was a marvel to men and women of his time. His continual research required him to be ever-present in order to construct what his new visions were now teaching him. Speaking several languages fluently and appearing as suave as he did, Tesla became one of the Waldorf Astoria's most illustrious regular visitors. During New York's Gilded Age, he dined alone at Delmonico's, where his table was always set and ready for his arrival. His dearest friends were among the rich and the sociable of New York's wealthiest class. Magazine writers flocked to him for his every new word. Samuel Clemens was a close friend. He was well acquainted with the Vanderbilts and the other leading members of debutante society. Tesla cut across American society out of obscurity. From the European Heights down into the living death of a ditch and up again into wealth. His was a magical biography. He enjoyed the company of Mark Twain, Enrico Caruso, Sir William Crooks, Ignaz Paderewski, Anton Dvorak, John Muir, George Westinghouse, and others like them. And new proposals came upon him from the gainsaying world. There came now into his sphere 
a dangerous friend. Morgan. Morgan would make Tesla his own. His gracious offer of financial assistance was refused by Tesla, who pointed out that he himself was, as well, a millionaire. Upon arriving after such a meeting with the Commodore, Tesla found bad news. Somehow, his laboratories were burning down. By this time, it was impossible to refuse the Commodore's demands. The scenario of fame, fortune, and acceptance was soon to change dramatically for Nikola Tesla forever. One variable which Morgan himself could not foresee came into the picture. His own daughter fell deeply in love with Nikola Tesla. Due to such pressures and activities, Tesla began a series of lectures. In these lectures abroad, Tesla began describing his newest series of realizations and achievements. His dramatic appearance and his suave speaking manner held audiences of both European and American scientific circles in absolute awe. As he both described and demonstrated his views on etheric physics, others were now being filled with new hope for science and the future of humanity. As the foremost speaker of these new fields of inquiry, he also was the first to develop means of proving that etheric interactions were in fact taking place in the laboratory via electrical stimulation. His early researches into radiant effects included x-rays and all the optics associated within that world of study. He described wireless energies whose power required merely that transmitter and receiver were to be in strict resonance for energy to manifest at any point in space. Nikola Tesla is the true father of radio. His novel science included wireless transmission of energies, of signals, and of power for use. These inventions did not simply utilize electrical power. No, these conductors of the etheric presence used electricity to stimulate the vast reservoirs, strange energies, and endless manifestations of the ether itself. Many modern contemporaries have lost sight of this truth. The numerous attempts to figure Tesla's later claims and developments fall into serious conflicts when viewed from the strictly inertial philosophy of modern electrodynamics. Many of his discoveries fall into the category of anomalous phenomena. His own early research into luminous phenomena in vacuum tubes led to an entirely new possibility for him to show that the ether was being directly affected by electrical stimulation. His discovery of cosmic rays was later to lead into his greatest technology. This portion of his work is little known by most scholars, for it took place during that time when Tesla had become Morgan's victim. Tesla was forever after to speak in short, curt, qualifying statements. He was careful with his assertions and kept most of the information to himself. This course led him to an ultimate experimental marvel before the turn of the century in which Tesla began to utilize the entire planet 
in a series of daring investigations. With this huge apparatus, he studied radio power, ionospheric energy, earth resonance, solar power fields, extra low frequency transmission, interplanetary communications, impressment of thought upon the human psyche. You will remember that all this took place in 1899, before a world of enthralled onlookers. It was in this Colorado Springs laboratory, built during the summer before the last century's turn, that Nikola Tesla began a series of experiments in global proportions whose resultant meaning forever convinced Tesla that his strange visions, his sudden realizations, and external etheric actions were all truly of a oneness. In these several photographs, we see the record. The various galleries and laboratory sections of his Colorado experimental station show these first impressions of a powerful effect being registered within the source rooms of Tesla's great halls. Many students have had difficulty interpreting and understanding the exact nature of the magnifying transmitter shown here. Certain students have reduced the value and scope of these researches by relegating this device as a mere method of transmitting very low frequency radio energy to distant places with high efficiency. These scholars will point out that the device held an efficiency ratio far exceeding the present use of power lines and that energy distribution would now be greatly enhanced through the use of such a resonant network. The factual reception and utilization of such energy in order to light a bank of very large electrical lamps at some 20 miles distance was not Tesla's main concern and certainly not his greatest success in Colorado. If we are to gain exact understanding concerning the startling revelation which Nikola Tesla discovered in this Colorado Springs laboratory, we must scrutinize his later statements. To Tesla, electricity was now but a particular manifestation of the luminiferous ether. By utilizing the entire globe as a resonant cavity, Tesla discovered that far more than radio power was returning to his circuits. Tesla also now found that nearby these machines, thought and perception were being measurably affected. This seemed to occur also when the power was off. Forever after these experiences in Colorado Springs, Tesla was continually to speak of a new kind of energy which he called teleforce. Teleforce was not an energy form like light, neither was it particle beams or any kind of radio power per se. Tesla, electricity was now but a specific manifestation of the luminiferous ether. The electricity served merely as an index of the deeper potency and the more strange dynamics within this ether. Tesla now had entry into this territory. For through the veils of electrical phenomena, Tesla discovered other regions and species of energy gleaming through. To him, it was a proven fact. Energy, matter, and thought itself were 
a oneness. It was now possible for him to alter that oneness. Such energies, beaming invisibly through high-tension terminals, could cause the very etheric presence to be secured for power. As one tuned into these realms of great power, one could easily enter the very experience of those regions. One of Tesla's deepest desires was to enable all people to participate in the beneficial qualities available in etheric experiences. This would certainly be accomplished, he had hoped, through certain new devices which could broadcast intelligence directly. Ideas directly. Visions directly. He wished to make true intercommunication possible between entities. Certainly, he was referring to far more than radio and television, which he had already designed and built in simplistic form. His world system broadcast was to do far more than transmit inert data. In our continuing series of telecasts, we will show Tesla's etheric physics. We will indicate the exact ways in which Tesla had managed to work within the ether. We shall also demonstrate that Tesla had in fact constructed such apparatus as to transmit intelligence directly. different places today. It is arcing widely and rapidly in its blazing paths. These paths are never isolated to one region or nation. The fierceness of the greedy will never succeed in quenching its power. The ray of discovery will continue to change your world. Watch for it. There is a power, ancient and forever new, no one may resist. It is the very ray which gives discovery. No one will stop or manipulate it. The ray of discovery will change your world. Hello again, and thank you for tuning in. In our continuing series of telecasts, we will chronicle some of the most astounding discoveries made in our time. You and I, together, will rediscover technology which has been kept suppressed for some 50 years by desperate financiers. Look now to your viewing screens as we unfold this drama together. The visionary genius of Nikola Tesla granted to this great discoverer a sure glimpse into a new world of possibilities for all humanity. While most of America was to focus her attentions on matters of the earth, bound up as she was with the soil of spreading farmlands, Nikola Tesla was peering through a veil made thin by certain experiments in Colorado Springs. 
His motivation began with certain inner convictions concerning the true nature of space, matter, energy, and thought itself. The luminiferous ether, that mysterious ground of all experience, out of which emerges all new phenomena, this was his special quest. The learned people of his day had already begun to demote the importance of the etheric view of experience, relegated now to seeing ether merely as a medium of transmission. By this ether, they claimed, light was merely conducted through the cosmic spaces. Formerly in and throughout history, the value of the ethereal qualities alternately was honored or dismissed. By the latter 1800s, etheric reality would be again dismissed by a world of materialists, whose supposed new theoretics were mere restatements of the materialists of other days. Somehow, this materialistic view of nature was in harmony with the leading thrust of the day, especially among the financier's elite, a hardened view of a measurable, accountable reality had to be right, or so these groups of protagonists asserted. There were no dreams, or some dreamy, wondrous power in the world anymore. No, there were only solid realities, countable ones, all of which could be described with mathematical exactness to a degree which made human experience uncertain. This bookkeeping view of the universe is taught today in our classrooms. It is a fatalistic view of nature, one which excludes all possibility of new phenomena entering into the picture. Created by a ruling class, like produces like. What has been passed off as the world of science is merely a restatement of materialistic skepticism, which is ruled by a class of high priests, scientists whose main concern is maintaining doctrine. All experience counter to doctrine, whether provable or not, will not be allowed into their system. Yes, the ancient philosopher was correct when he said that reality was seeing one's own face reflected in the water. Nikola Tesla experienced visions continually. Whatever he built in this realm of experience always worked the very first time. This marvel was well known to his assistants. But for Tesla, this was evidence of something far greater. For him, it was the luminiferous ether itself. This was no mere conducting fluid which filled space. Etherion was experience itself in endless diversities of manifestations. And Tesla was discovering many new manifestations, both in the natural plenum and in the world of greed and domination. Thomas Edison was already totally in the grip of Morgan. Morganization was not a new reality for successful inventors. The Commodore was at his best in those days, buying and taking new lands of possibilities while the inventors were discovering them. The dreamer now was a mere commodity, one to be bought and discarded. The material momentum of the invention would do the rest for the money men. The democratic republic had failed. The monarchy had been restored through a loophole in the constitution, which none of our well-intending founding fathers had foreseen. Unbridled greed and wealth in unregulated free enterprise would create kings again. And this new monarch would not waste time in turning the government into a mere tool for his own expansionistic and imperialistic conquests. 
the military would take orders from him now, and the nation would again be working for a dynastic family. But why was Tesla such a threat to Morgan? Why was his kind so feared by this strong man? What did Tesla have which few young men possessed? Edison, growing old and uninspired by materialism, was already owned by Morgan. Ford had been approached as well. Every dreamy inventor was to be captured into the net and held secure until such time as was deemed necessary to make the maximum profit. When the inventor grew too visionary, this was the danger point. Cut their research money and they surely must perish in obscurity, or so Morgan believed. I suspect he believes it to this day. Morgan had already moved into the field of legislation. His people were writing the new laws pertinent to business and flesh. Anything could be bought, including the Republic herself, along with all the right to rule which came with the package deal. This Tesla was a strange and dangerous fellow. What was this fire, this glowing stare? This European would know who his patron and his master was. When Tesla informed Morgan that he was not interested, he was impeccable. He strode past little Mr. Adams as he left the great hall of the King of America. A very short while later, however, Tesla was called in excitedly by his dear assistant. It seemed that Tesla's entire laboratory had mysteriously burned to the ground. Each pirate has his parrot. Morgan's uh, Mr. Adams again called upon Nikola Tesla. Of course, Nikola had to accept the generous help which Morgan extended in this hour of need. Anne, no doubt, was thrilled. Morgan played this hand to the hilt for he knew Tesla. Nicola would never marry. He was married to the woman more loving already. Tesla built his last grand work in public view under Morgan rule. Nor did Morgan ever intend to utilize the developments of Tesla and others like him. No, this was an old rule which kings had best cleave unto. New things are dangerous to finances. For the last 100 years, there have come such treasures of discovery as would make you, the audience, swoon and collapse under the sheer import of the certain knowledge of our desolation. Here in America, we still burn coal and oil, and this for a good reason. Who has owned all the coal? Who has owned all the oil since the 1800s? Find his name and you have the criminal. In truth, we have been made to live 1,000 years behind what is now known. In our continuing series of telecasts, we shall endeavor to bring forth the most critical pieces of knowledge which the visionaries demonstrated in public view. We shall cover the suppression of medical discoveries and of discoveries in energy, communications, metallurgy, transportation, agricultural sciences. All these will prove to you the validity of the fact that we have been overcome by a despotic few. Lay hold on these and civilization will flourish once more. What were those final discoveries of Nikola Tesla? What single triumph managed to sustain him throughout the years of his punishment and subjugation? Morgan made sure that Tesla was slandered and assassinated in character. Tesla spent the rest of his life, 40 years, wandering from hotel to hotel, ill-dressed, without credibility of any kind somewhat penniless. 
Gone were the lofty towers which Morgan had demolished in order to burn all the bridges. Tesla was left with what he knew. And so we ask again, what had he learned, which, cherished as a sacred flame, kept his eyes glowing and his face smiling a bit more kindly throughout his life? We suspect and we infer from credible sources, inferences made by Tesla and subsequently rediscovered designs which have been rebuilt and which are remarkable in every aspect. This, that Tesla found but one of the links between matter, energy, and thought itself, and demonstrated this in various ways until his death. Having learned this secret at Colorado Springs, he applied this in much smaller scale, in units which could be carried about and which had strange properties which we shall now describe. Tesla was dedicated to helping this nation. This may have been his weak point, for every other country in the world was listening to whatever Tesla was saying during those days of his house arrest status. These nations were attempting to implement his claims and with certain results, we should add. Competition is the pepper in the eyes of monarchy. The smokescreens of corporate knighthood cannot hide the face of a monarch forever. In America, there are wars waged whenever this monarch is found out. Legislation does the rest. The young are trundled off to die on foreign soils of investment. The Colorado Springs Laboratory was an attempt to achieve planetary electrical resonance. What began as a mere experiment in power transfer ended with a startling, unexpected discovery. A huge, ring-shaped primary coil was excited by a system of electrical condensers and a large generator supplied locally. A secondary coil stood within this 80-foot in diameter ring. Being tuned to resonate with the energizing ring, transforming the input energy into stupendous voltages, the 200-foot mast carried this excess energy into the atmosphere. The greater effect was made to enter the ground itself. The idea was to find which electrical notes would make all of the Earth respond in such a way as to store up and intensify the input pulses. Tesla found the heartthrobs of the planet there in Colorado Springs. In the ultra-low radio spectrum, Tesla found which rates of impulse could make the free electricity within the planet resonate. But something else was being observed. Something unexpected was being measured. Radio waves once were generated by Tesla's own designs. These units produced prolific energies in a wide spread of harmonics. Later on, as oscillators were designed by engineers and theoreticians, waves were generated which had a smooth balance of phasing between electric and magnetic components. Tesla designed this magnifying transmitter so that the phasing between both wave components could be selectively varied. He maximized either the magnetic wave or the electric wave portions of the transmissions repeatedly. Using the Earth itself as a huge wave refractor, Nikola Tesla discovered that a third element of energy was entering into his circuitry powerfully. This third unknown portion was measurably affecting his machinery. This it did while registering consistently greater input energies than were being used in exciting the device itself. Tesla saw that the radio wave itself was merely a manifestation of a greater energetic plenum. 
Here was fresh proof of his innermost convictions again. He had seen these kinds of anomalies before, while researching vacuum discharges and X-ray phenomena. Now, while rendering the entire planet into a uniform electrical resonator, he found discovery upon discovery. The Earth, he then found, was a reservoir of energies. With the power off, the coil was resonating powerfully at specific settings. These energies seemed to come at regular intervals and with great intensity. The measured antenna current exceeded the input energy by several factors at certain tunings. This third component was registering mysteriously within an electrical system here. Tesla even recorded certain observations when the power was off. The coils seemed to have a profound effect upon thought processes. Visionary episodes and experiences were enormously amplified. The magnifying transmitter worked beyond all expectations. Whenever systems resonate, unexpected energies will enter them and leave measurable effects. Some of these effects may be measurable by the human organism alone as reflexes or alternations in perceptions. These effects will vary as the device is designed. There are many species of energy and Tesla was one of the first to demonstrate this fact. What he was first at was the global demonstration of ultra resonance using radio waves as the stimulus exciter for that third component to enter powerfully. With radio waves, only such a device could manifest the effect at such extra low frequencies. The effects upon the human organism, again, were critical. Tesla maintained that new warfare could be waged while utilizing such devices. Power could be triangulated into any area with subsequent damaging effects. The maximum effects were physiological ones, impressed upon the natural rhythms of body, mind, and soul. Here were energies entering our region from that place of foundational structure, where matter, energy, and thought emerged. Tesla was at peace, having found yet another instance where this effect could be dramatically presented. In Colorado Springs, however, this effect was huge in proportion and supremely effective in registration of these facts. Towers, however, can be toppled. Gigantic things may be brought low. Remember, Morgan had no intention of ever implementing Tesla's ideas. His was merely the experiment with behavior to see how far a visionary can go in destabilizing a financial dynasty. Morgan had already spotted the financier's modern threat. It is the inventor whose receptivity of new things can actually disrupt the status quo. Such a thing could not be under this king's rule. Morgan financed Tesla's new project for a time until it was evident that Tesla had not told all the truth. Faith, you will remember, is not a monarch's virtue. Tesla had found an astounding way to release free energy into the earth. The king's advisor had missed the true nature of the natural plenum. Thereafter, it seemed that every etheric physics treatise was eliminated from classroom and library.
while an obscure theory was given power to hoist its materialistic jargon amid the many voices in the public eye. When one considers the scientific journals of that day, one really marvels that a patent clerk could become such a great figure. No doubt, someone was looking for a new theory to advance in order that the horror of free energy from the ethereum could be swallowed up in forgetfulness. But this now is an utter impossibility, for Tesla had established a resonant condition in the earth. The power, I believe, is still flowing. The older the snake, the more cunning it becomes. The dynastic monarchy learned the value of secrecy and subversion. One must not be in the public eye too much. Tesla was viewed as a senile old fool by this time, aided no doubt by the owned media. Far from this, as we shall see by certain leaks in the press and private literature having to do with this time period, we shall see that Nikola Tesla had possessed critical knowledge and was advancing such work in secrecy. What was Nikola Tesla doing with all his time? Why was he forever in the Manhattan Public Library? What about those materials he was having made to order and delivered to his rooms? Tesla was about to prove that his marvelous discovery could fit into a briefcase. Gone was his need for the gigantic and the grandiose. Gone was his need for the patron. One could fit this effect of his into a small package built in one's hotel room. In fact, Tesla had designed and built a space power receiver in private. He never publicized this or any subsequent discovery from the time his Wardenclyffe Tower in Long Island and his laboratory there were ruthlessly sacked and destroyed by Morgan's people. This device was viewed by a number of persons, including Dr. Lee DeForest, inventor of the Audion tube. The power receiver was a compact little unit powered by a few briefcase carried vacuum tubes. These were inserted into their proper terminals in the dashboard of an electric car outfitted for this test run. Tesla's nephew wrote an extensive report on this event at the request of an enthused investigator who was informed of it. This car ran silently and so much was the excess power in the dashboard that Tesla had to allow a cool down period to occur. Upon asking several questions, Tesla concluded his demonstration by saying that the power for the car was being supplied, quote, by a mysterious energy which comes out of the ether and which mankind should be very grateful for, unquote. He went on to say that there was enough power in the small unit to plug into a house and cause it to drive all the household electrical systems with plenty to spare. He then predicted that soon the world would be harnessing and utilizing such energies. This was by no means the end of Nikola Tesla. One reads much, much more into his later, often secretive and precise statements. He often spoke of a new form of energy transmission in which gigawatts of power could be directed and conducted along a thread-like beam. Teleforce was not electrical, but could cause electrical effects, he claimed. Engineers, now in mere momentum of Morgan snowballing character assassination, scoffed as they interpreted the material in ordinary electrical terms. Such energy as this does not exist, they claimed. 
as is often the case within dogmatically closed systems of thought. The members thereof cannot receive the emergence of any outside realities. All such outside reality must be interpreted through their dogma. They fail to realize that Tesla had developed his etheric refractor far beyond ordinary electrodynamics. Their precious electrodynamics is now a mere side effect of a much greater discovery. There is every indication that Nikola Tesla had begun working on psychotronics. This mysterious new branch of engineering deals with the interaction of mind and energy within certain constructed designs. We have evidence that Nikola Tesla was constructing and designing appliances made to transmit thought directly. Rumors have it that Nikola Tesla's greatest secrets have been stored away in vaults which are not to be opened for several more decades. His experimental work with visual rays were to make the transmission of thought, image and understanding directly available to the recipient. Standing before a screen of receptivity of certain design, the recipient would directly receive a thought transmission. This is far more than ordinary TV, in which images are merely sprayed onto a glass screen where they remain. No. Psychotronic transmission would involve implantation of thought, image, and sensation directly to the recipient. Appliances and energies such as these would indeed totally transform our globe, as Dr. Tesla claimed. Warfare as well could be made an ungodly threat to anyone's enemies. For here was power which outweighed that of nuclear energy. By now, the effect of cumulative ignorance has overtaken even the king in his chambers. No one would believe these statements and demonstrations of Tesla. Yet, that smile of his persists as mysteriously as the etheric plenum whose gift spoke clearly into the mind of Nikola Tesla. A week, one week before his planned appointment with President Roosevelt, Nikola Tesla was found in his hotel room. He had quietly and peacefully passed away in the night. The echoes of radiant space still proclaim his greatness. In two previous telecasts, we have brought forth certain of the astounding facts concerning the discoveries of Nikola Tesla in his pursuit of developments in the etheric science which was his passion. Truly it was that Tesla had found ways of using electricity in order to stimulate energetic transformations into an entirely different realm of energy. This realm of etheric energy was distinctive, unexpected, powerful, and provided him with utterly new modes of energy transmission and startling possibilities otherwise impossible when using electricity alone. 
we have shown how that in the latter portion of our last century, America was being converted into a monarchic structure by successive ascendancies of financiers. And we have mentioned the sordid details in brief passages concerning the actions of one such American king, J.P. Morgan, whose ruthless pursuit of Nikola Tesla makes him one of history's most illustrious sons of perdition. The drama portrayed in the fierce campaign leveled against Tesla and his discoveries by Morgan's ill-begotten tactics provides us with the very bridge of passage connecting all the so-called mysteries and inconsistencies of our nation's 20th century history. Understanding the role of the monarchic thrones within our republic and understanding their very means of steering the very government itself is vital to every true son and daughter of liberty. For it was these dynastic families which managed to turn the system of free enterprise into a means not of bettering all humanity, but of entering the heart chambers of our government and of subverting all that is just and good for the sake of mastery over others. We know that the covert operations of both military and intelligence networkings have been taking orders from these very families whose names are familiar to every one of the most common passers-by on the streets. And we are appalled at the complacency with which these persons have been permitted to continue their viciousness and their crimes against humanity. Your sons and daughters have been made to fight and die on foreign soils of investment, while these monarchs continue to reap their treasures of blood. These crimes against humanity must finally be put to an end. Beware, however, for these monarchs possess networks of intrigue and personal militia groups which make the approach to them difficult. Their continual shifting movements from estate to estate through the use of private air forces make their position vague and difficult to pinpoint. Theirs is a justified fear, and the American citizen should be pursuing these matters just as ruthlessly as those who hunt for the war criminals of Germany's Nazi era. Startling revelations have come forth just recently to us, and it is with great desire and excitement that we may disclose briefly some of our discoveries concerning the latter portion of the life of Nikola Tesla. His activities in private research, his private enterprise and subsequent developments in secret will astound you. Although we will make full disclosure at some future date, we may inform you that we have located individuals who are in possession of Tesla's own laboratory equipment, and they are most unconventionally distinct. These notable and unexpected finds represent verifiable evidence as concerning Tesla's claim of power transmission of an entirely different mode, as well as varieties of hardware whose energetic transformations point the way into new technology. We have also located persons who verify that Tesla's entire assortment of new technological abstracts have been stored away in various time capsules which will be eventually found and made available to many specific individuals. Tesla, from the time in which he was pursued by Morgan, never again patented any material. Some persons call this the demise of Nikola Tesla. And nothing can be further from the truth, for Tesla was tireless in his researches and discoveries until his death. He is often portrayed as dying in abject poverty alone in his hotel room. But we need to examine the particulars of these false views to gain the startling key 
to exactly what he was doing during these later years. That he never published anything again was his resolve after 1927 or thereabouts. To assert that this dynamo of inventors was simply fading away is tantamount to accepting whole-mouthed the very lie which the dynastic ruler wished all to believe. Tesla threatens every monarch within America, whether DuPonts, Rockefellers, Morgans, Hunts, Gettys, or others, however deep they have withdrawn ever so cautiously into their obscurities of anonymity, and this they do out of fear. But be sure of this, Tesla threatens them all to this day. For here is a man, along with the myriads like him, who can actually bring the earth and all its nations into a place of virtual utopia. For the discoveries of Tesla and others reinforced the truth concerning our true nature and the nature of the universe in which we are sheltered. The freely moving energies which these people discovered would crush the Commodores utterly and completely. The discoveries of free broadcast medical cures by Reif, Abrams, Hieronymus, Drown, and many, many others would banish disease and destroy the pharmaceutical castlery into dust. The transportational modes developed by Townsend Brown, John Searle, and numerous others would surely place the moon and other near heavenly bodies within easy and effective reach of us all. And the materials science developed by Thomas Henry Moray and others like him would trigger new revolutions of technology that would make every present monarchic throne in America kneel down and dissolve. The Commodores in truth would forestall this fate indefinitely if they could. Of a truth, America has been overcome and enslaved by the Commodores who now rule both you, your families, the fate of your sons and daughters, your future, your expectation, the course and struggles within your life, and all that you would reach and hope for. Think deeply on these things. Think dearly on them and make your move. But in all this world of intrigue, it seems that the universe will forever have the last and deepest laughter within itself. For neither monarch nor monarchy will stand alone. The very presence of such futile dynasties automatically produces competitors who ultimately destroy them all as well. While Morgan was destroying Tesla and repressing discovery, in his own mind. It seemed that every other dictatorship was meticulously picking through Tesla's every word, rumor, patent, article, and declaration in search of his devices and his discoveries. And these searches have been fruitful for them. So our sources are revealing to us, and our sources are definitive ones. Tesla mentioned several discoveries and the implementation of those discoveries before an incredulous world. The owned media were steered by their rulers into portraying Tesla up to his very death as a senile old fool whose appetite for attention and the limelight in which to boast was his fatal flaw. But this was a lie and we possess the absolute proof and the numerous retrieved devices of Tesla which we have discovered. Firstly, Tesla did not die in abject poverty. He died in his penthouse suite atop the Hotel New Yorker. He owned the two top penthouses and occupied one in all the elegance of the Victorian glory which he had known since his days with George Westinghouse. The other penthouse was rarely occupied by him, but the discovery of a paneled room within that second structure reveals the most mysterious 
and startling fact that second penthouse was a research laboratory made in all the secrecy attending the villains of the serial thrillers of the 30s. And in that enclosure, across the rooftop garden walk, was a complete research laboratory. There is an additional rumor concerning a third penthouse suite owned by Tesla and regularly visited by him through the years atop the Waldorf. One researcher has claimed that this was the site of the power broadcast which made the electric car of Tesla lore to operate profoundly. The antenna structures were known to have been formidable atop this latter site, and the story of these spectacular finds will be described in detail in a soon coming telecast. While Tesla was feverishly pursuing his thrilling discoveries in the fields of space energies, psychotronic transmission of thought and intelligence, psychotronic weaponry, etheric beam weaponry, and transportation via gravity nullifying rays, the Soviets also were actively following and attempting to duplicate all his claims. In, in fact, all of Stalin's regime was centered around such researches in their own dire attempt at outdoing our atomic bomb arsenal by all and any means. Stalin enslaved thousands of qualified persons along with the Nazi defectors whom Russia enslaved almost as warmly as America rewarded them. These were forced ordered and threatened to develop new weaponry and technologies in order to ensure the utter defeat of the capitalistic systemologies wherever found globally. Do not trust this modern sweep of glasnost with its cunning subliminal usage of words implying gladness. Stalin reaped his rewards in the research laboratories which now turned out weaponry and technologies hand over fist from the early 1940s down until Khrushchev's regime. Today, today we have several facts in possession which justify a disclosure of the global implications of Tesla's technology in the hands of the Russians. First, our own SDI project has resulted in the deployment of beam weapons on several of the Russian naval installations. This we have as a reference point by a Ukrainian doctor of physics who learned of these truths from colleagues within the USSR. These devices are curious developments along accepted lines of engineering, but have nothing in common with the far more mysterious designs of Nikola Tesla which involved recently rediscovered and demonstrable facts while using Tesla's own specified hardware. The effects are etheric ones and cannot be explained by existing electrodynamic theory. The Teleforce beam weapons of Tesla utilize extremely high bursts of energy in specially made plasma arc jets. The effects noted during operations of low power devices, as reported to us by researchers, is the powerful transmission of a mysterious direct current thread through great spatial distances without any apparent current passage through that space. These paradoxical measurements are real and we will furnish certain of these demonstrations in video format for you the audience in a soon coming telecast. The Teleforce threads emanating from these devices are coherent ones and represent a very different form of energy. These beams may also be made to transmit usable power at great distances. And in the forthcoming video demonstration, you will see electrical capacitors charged by the emanations of these simple devices alone. The strong emanations do effect electrical changes while not themselves being electrical at all. These, the Soviets were very concerned with recreating and deploying in modified form long after our own military apparently had rejected all such proposals. 
This the American forces seemed to do because of the cumulative effect of accepted ignorance. And since their chief engineering consultants were using the accepted paradigms, which limited their view without actual experimental evidence, they were predisposed to reject all possibilities of teleforce. But their Soviet counterparts never had such a luxury. Stalin, you will remember, was threatening both self and family with punishment and death, should they not recreate these devices. Every Tesla patent was meticulously scoured and rebuilt, and we have no doubt that they did, in fact, manage to rediscover that Tesla's technology has nothing in common with ordinary electrical machinery. They found, as did certain of our researchers, that Tesla's machinery actually utilizes energies which are etherically derived and left unexplored. Tesla discovered an entire basement level of reality and developed his own technology independently while others were devising machinery along more conventional directions during those early years of research. As is often the case, when the herd enters any region, there seems to follow a tendency towards reductionism and the, quote, practical effectiveness approach, unquote, which eliminates most of the anomalous findings which hold the deepest secrets. These seem to fall to the side and are left as artifacts in journals for the willing and the curious to search out. Bibliomancy? will become an increasingly important art as our new century approaches and progresses. The second field of inquiry which Soviet science slave camps were forced to study was extrasensory perception and all the associated powers in that realm of reality. When we are shown those task press releases of psychokinetic phenomenon involving Russian peasant girls, we are being warned of their far deeper accomplishments, of which we have several absolute references. The Russians recruited every person who tested strongly as potential psychokinetic projectors. They also recruited every strongly receptive or transmissive psychic for use in certain projects and for direct application in their own psychotronics laboratories. What, what is psychotronics? What is its history? And what is its potential use as weaponry? We ask these questions now. It was near about the turn of our last century that several researching persons began noticing the effects of thought itself upon certain measuring systems particularly electrical ones. Tesla was one of these. We mentioned how that he noticed the effects of resonant coils upon his own thought processes directly while the power was off. A most curious legend was advanced as a joke, but more recently has been revealed as solid evidence that Tesla had in fact been making advancements for a long time in the field of psychotronics. He had been working in methods used to enhance, alter, amplify, repress, and project thoughts themselves. Such machinery and modems of action are psychotronic devices, and these are specifically designed to allow the interaction of the operator's mind and will when in use. These devices are designed to demonstrate thought projection and enhanced thought reception, as well as to determine certain other remarkable things as the retrieval of lost articles and persons, or the retrieval of desired articles and the whereabouts of them. While these tidings sound utterly fantastic and unacceptable, we have absolute demonstrable proof that they not only represent realities, but are in fact the very peak of items now being tested and deployed in high clearance intelligence circles. These devices make atomic weaponry foolishly obsolete. 
Now, these devices are in existence in the Soviet Union and are deployed as weaponry. And the Soviets have been coupling the use of such psychotronic devices along with their army of psychically gifted persons. The device shown to you here is the famous Agrad machine designed and perfected in order to utilize etheric energy surges in order to destroy pests which plague every farmer. The device worked in every case, clearing the fields of any selected pest by simply varying the frequency of transmission and working with certain other parameters and remarkable artifacts which shall be best left for some future telecast. Suffice it to say now that these devices killed all such field pests while using a moderate amount of power and did so wirelessly at a distance. Well before he died and early in his research into psychotronic warfare, Tesla left a mysterious black box in his vault at the New Yorker Hotel with strict instructions placed upon the parcel. Most likely, he had forgotten the matter completely in his later years. But emphatic were his commands. No one, he said repeatedly, must ever open this box, for very dire consequences will ensue. After Tesla had passed away, the curiosity seekers impelled the hotel manager to open the vault and remove the parcel. The contents of this package proved to be a very simple decade resistance circuit with input and output terminals of the kind which we see here and represents Tesla's earliest levels of development in the field of psychotronics. It is in fact a very well-known radionic tuning device of the type which was used by Dr. Albert Abrams and Dr. Ruth Drown in the field of medical diagnosis. What were the words of Tesla tinged with so much? Were his fears of the weaponization of these powers and forces admixed ironically in his earliest quotes? Would this device be the Pandora box which would unleash the ultimate powers capable of destroying all of humankind? Would these be the dire consequences? Others had discovered ways of amplifying these energies thousands of levels higher by the use of vacuum tube circuits. These machines had powerful effects upon persons at any distance. What could the Soviets do with their psychotronic installations? These machines have the proven ability of sending pain into any grouping of persons. They have the power of psychically moving objects and affecting matter measurably. They have the ability to operate in a mode capable of striking great fear and dread into any sized grouping of individuals, triggering panic or self-destruction. They may alter perception or events, modify or interrupt delicate procedures in any echelon level. They may discover desired items and the whereabouts of them with ease, including secrets. And these claims are not fantasy speculations. We possess absolute proof through certain defectors who were employed in the development of even more powerful embodiments of these simple but deadly devices. These very persons have much more to say about the specific successes and routine exercises of these psychotronic military divisions behind the Iron Curtain. These same defectors have routinely been hounded by the CIA in their attempt at recreating the Soviet machinery. These self-same researchers they must do in secret and privately funded since the ruled government of America has been regulated by the Commodores. Third in our consideration is the discovery of the impressment 
of germ frequencies upon a population through the use of modified psychotronic transmitter stations. These energies are caused to impinge directly upon the bioplasmic continuum of Earth and is demonstrably able to produce disease symptoms in any target subject or population. The impressment of disease energies had its earliest start, as indeed all the psychotronics arts did, curiously, in the medical arts and were originally intended for use in therapy modes. But being now perverted by our communist enemies, and make no mistake about it, they are our enemies with deliberate strategies and tactical deception. We face the our Tesla early on foresaw. Our own military and covert intelligence researchers have not failed to see the dilemma we seriously question who their employers are, knowing of a certainty that what we supposed was a truly free enterprise democratic republic is in shocking reality nothing more now but a monarchic republic controlled by dynastic family rule. Fourth, and finally in our narrative, is the deliberate and measurable extra low frequency electrical pulsations of certain earth zones currently being waged by the Soviets. Tesla showed that such extra low frequency energies could be triangulated in very specific global zones in great force. These were virtually impossible to oppose, impossible to source, and capable of causing extreme physiological reactions in any populations so attacked. The proof of these serious allegations is the real detection by certain researchers of a very low frequency signal of extreme power, which has been dubbed the Russian woodpecker or the Soviet buzzsaw. Of interest in our discussion and corollary to these sordid unmaskings are the true accountings of behavior modification from behind the walls of the Third Reich. Admixed into the rage of Adolf Hitler's speeches were very low frequency audio signals and these had measured and calculated ability to create raised extremes of tension and emotional energies. Such mob frenzy was incalculably violent when once the sound waves were increased to threshold levels and crescendos. These very low frequency audio waves can also be used to kill. And we here show the patents of Dr. Gavreau, the French physicist who perfected several death beam acoustic lasers. These were powerful enough to kill herds of cattle and even in one accidental circumstance permanently injure several technicians on site. The ray of discovery is touching many different places today. It is arcing widely and rapidly in its blazing paths. These paths are never isolated to one region or nation. The fierceness of the greedy will never succeed in quenching its power. The ray of discovery will continue to change your world. Watch for it.